In this project, we're going to deploy the lightweight Linux desktop environment Xbuntu on AWS. On top of Xbuntu, we're going to deploy XRDB, which allows access to the desktop environment from a remote desktop client. There are several ways this project can be used. One common scenario is deploying it as a shared development environment for a small team. The desktop image we build includes all prerequisites required to clone and build any project on our channel on any cloud provider. The only thing you need to add are your access credentials. Another popular use case is running a lightweight Linux desktop as a jump box into your cloud environment. This is a cheaper alternative to using a Windows-based jump box. We'll begin by provisioning the mini Active Directory instance. This provides centralized authentication for our desktop users. As a part of the AD setup, several sample users are created. Their credentials are stored securely in AWS Secrets Manager. Next, we'll use Packer to build a reusable Xbuntu image that has the desktop environment and XRDB installed. We'll then take that AMI built from Packer and deploy an EC2 instance to test the desktop. Once initialized, you'll open a remote desktop client to the desktop server. At this point, you can pull out the credentials from Secret Manager to start testing the desktop. Once in the desktop environment, you can bring up Visual Studio Code to access this project source code. Now let's talk about the prerequisites for, for these AWS desktop projects. First off, there's a video out there called AWS and Terraform Easy Setup. I'll put a link at the top to that. That walks you through how you create an IAM user in the console, give it the right permissions for doing Terraform builds, and then extract out an access and secret key that you'll plug into the builds. So what you'll need for this desktop build is you need that AWS account with that secret and access key, which you'll set as environment variables. Then you'll have to have the AWS CLI, you'll need to have Terraform, and you need to have Packer. All three of those need to be in your path. Now we're ready to do the build. So the first thing you want to do is go to the documentation and go to this git clone command and copy it. Put it into your development environment, paste it. This will download the code and put you in the right directory. So the first thing you want to do is run the script check env, which will go through and validate all those prerequisites that we talked about earlier. Also, it will log into AWS to validate your secret and access key are correct. So once that's done, we're ready to run the build. The build takes about 30 minutes. About 15 minutes of that is just in taking the AMI. As always, if you have any comments on this video, please leave a comment below. The build has completed. Now let's go into the AWS console and take a look at what got built. So in the console, let's drill down into the EC2 section. This project deploys three EC2s. The first one is the mini AD controller. This is the identity provider for the desktop environment. And what we do is when we provision the AD controller, we provision four user accounts that we'll use in the demo. These user accounts have generated credentials for each build that you'll actually use and log in when you get to the XRDB login screen. These are the values that you're going to poke in there. Next, we have a Windows AD admin box. This is where you manage the users inside of a Windows desktop. And we'll, in the demo, we will add a new user and show you how you access that new user into the desktop. The final image is the Xbuntu image. It's the main event. Now, if you click on that and go and say, or in troubleshoot, say, show instance screenshot. This is the Xbuntu environment running on the console of the server. So we, we have it up and running. Now this Xbuntu instance is built from an AMI that we use with Packer. In the Packer build, we install Firefox, Chrome, VS Code, and all the utilities we need to actually do any of the builds on our channel. So that includes the gCloud CLI, the AZ CLI, the AWS CLI, and Terraform, Packer, and Docker. Any project on our channel, you should be able to do the build here. All you have to do is provide the credentials. We also deploy an EFS file system. The EFS file system is used for persistent human directories across EC2 instances. And we also download the, the code for this project into the slash EFS shared storage. Now let's take a look at the desktop environment. The first thing you want to do is run the validate script. This will emit the fully qualified domain name of the Xbuntu desktop. So I'm going to take that, copy it. I'm going to bring up the remote desktop client, put that in. It's going to bring up the XRDP login dialog. So uh, you're going to use R Patel. So now we need to go back to here and let's get our credentials here. So for the secrets, we'll get our credentials. 
Now, the thing that's a little bit irritating about this is you can't copy and paste. So you've actually got to note this down and type it in. You can't copy and paste into the actual login dialog. You can copy and paste into the desktop environment, just not the login diagram. And you'll log into the desktop environment. Now, you notice on the desktop, we have several icons that we've defined that does the various applications. So you've got Google Chrome. You've got Mozilla Firefox. Then you've got Postman. Uh, we've got this utility called Only Office, which allows you to open Office files in this environment. This is a, from a European company, and it's pretty good. And then the big thing is you've got Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to bring up Visual Studio Code. And what you'll see is it has downloaded the code from this project. And you can go and see it in here. So what we also have in the terminal session, we can see we've got all the AZ or all the CLIs for the cloud providers and then all the tools. So at this point, you should be able to do a build. So if I go into um, AWS setup, now I need to go and set your environment variables here. Once I've set my environment variable as my credentials, I should be able to run check ENV. And it's going to go run on this AWS setup. The AWS setup project is the one from the AWS Terraform uh, setup project. And so at this point, I could run apply and build all my Terraform projects right here in this environment. You can also see, also see the EFS file system mounted as slash EFS. So if I go in here and I do um, df-h, you'll see both your home directories and EFS are, are mounted the other application that's in here is the Internet KRDC. This is a remote desktop client within the environment, and this is how you can use this as a jump box. Now let's walk through creating a new user for the desktop environment. The first thing you want to do is get into the desktop environment, and you're going to, we're going to use this as a jump box. The next step is we're going to go back to the development environment and run validate. And validate is going to give you either the fully qualified domain of the Windows instance or the IP address. So this, you take the uh, domain name here. Let's go back to the desktop environment and let's go to applications, internet, KRDC. We're going to use this environment, like I said, as a jump box. So we want to go in here and we do RDP. That is the the AD admin box from the validate script. Click on that. And what we want to do is hit OK. And we're going to do R Patel. And we need to go back and get those credentials from Credentials Manager again. So I hit OK. Password from Credentials Manager. OK, so this is the Windows AD admin box. And so what we want to do is I'm going to go to full screen here. And I am going to say, um, first off, we're on the Windows side. And so the first thing you'll notice is there is a Z drive. The Z drive maps the shared file system. What you can do on that is go in there and then go into the project directory and go to utils. And remember, when you add a new Linux user on the Windows side, you have to specify a GID number. UID number and UID. So we need to calculate what the next UUID is. So I'm going to go get next UID. It's going to come back and say your next UID number for your next user you're going to add is 10,005. And I'm going to bring up administrative tools. Then I'm going to do active directory users and groups. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do view advanced features. So I'm going to go and expand my domain and I'm going to go to the users folder and I'm going to say new user. I'm going to call the user Mike Cloud. I'm going to give it a user login of mcloud. Hit next. You need to specify a password. I'm going to say don't expire. Hit next. And it's going to finish. So now we need to go to uh, Mike Cloud. And we have a couple of things we need to set in here. The first thing is we go to Attribute Editor. And this is where you set the UID number, GID number, and 
UID. So I'm going to go to the GID number, and we're going to test set that to 10,001. That is the mCloud users group. OK. And then we're going to go back down to UID. And UID, I need to set the user ID of the Linux side. So I'm going to do mCloud, hit Add. And then we need to specify UID number. And that's the one that we calculated to begin with. It's 10,005. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit OK. So now we've, we've set the required attributes. Now we need to give some group membership. So I'm going to go back to properties here. And I'm going to say uh, member of. I'm going to say add and mCloud users. And let's just call this person in US. And then I'm also going to add and say Linux admins. And this user will also be able to sudo on the desktop environment. So I'm going to hit OK. Now, a quick thing you can test out here is you can go into um, here and say get next UID, hit run. And it's going to say 10,006 because 10,005 is now owned by the mCloud user. So at this point, we're ready to actually log into the desktop. So you bring up your remote desktop client. I'm going to hit connect. So we get the XRDB dialog. So I'm going to do mCloud. And I'm going to set the credential, or use the credentials I set when I added the user. And there you go. You've logged in as mCloud. If I bring up a shell, I can say ID. And it's going to show you mCloud. You got the GID number, which is mCloud users. Then you have the different groups that I assigned. Since I did Linux admins, I should be able to do sudo bash. And I am now root. So that's the steps for adding a new user into your desktop environment. At this point, after you've uh, played with the desktop environment, it's now time to be a good stewards of your cloud accounts. And what you want to do is destroy your project. So you want to run the destroy. The destroy takes about 10 minutes for all the desktops.